this is completely ridiculous. Uh, my water pipe is on fire. That is a sentence I never thought I would say. Let's find out what's going on. This story starts with our smoke alarms going off all over the house. Me and my wife frantically running around trying to work out which room caused the problem. Turns out to be this room, the shed. And my wife said, Ben, I found the problem. It's one of the water pipes in the shed is on fire. Now that is a sentence I never thought I would hear. And I said, honey, you must be smoking something because water pipes don't catch fire. But immediately uh, offered a slice of humble pie because indeed this water filling loop here did have smoke as we saw in the in the intro bellowing out of the top of it. I had to take a moment to think what on earth could be causing that. Maybe answer in the comments what you think could be causing smoke coming out of a water pipe. I had a brainwave, I thought it's gotta be electrical. So I turned off the circuit breakers, the smoke stopped. I turned the breaker back on. Don't do that yourself, by the way, but I sneakily turned it back on. Smoke started again, confirmed my hypothesis, turned it off, and it's been left off ever since. I'm gonna show you exactly how we find out what's wrong and fix it. So before we go any further, let's have a quick think about what could possibly be going wrong here. We have something, uh, some current flowing between these two pipes. In fact, if I look really carefully, smoke is billowing out of this point here. So in order for a current to flow down here, there must be a difference in voltage between the two. Now I would expect all three of these pipes to be tied to earth properly for safety, right? So that you, you don't want exposed conductive parts like this, uh, potentially being at a voltage anything uh, different to earth because it could flow through you. Now I know for a fact that this supply line at the top, which is a fresh water fill, uh, is connected properly to earth. I can see the bonding uh, over in the other corner of the room. Uh, but I suspect that this flow and return pipe here are not properly bonded. That's my guess. Anyway, so what we're gonna do, now that we've safely isolated the supply, is we're gonna take a little look at the continuity uh, between the earthing terminal uh, and this pipe, and hopefully we'll get very little resistance. And then when I look at the continuity between these other two pipes, I suspect uh, that they're not gonna be properly bonded to earth. Now, that's just a guess, uh, but that's my starting point. So again, to recap, the hypothesis is that there's a difference in voltage between say here and here, and therefore current is flowing along this pipe causing heating in a weak joint here maybe there's a rubber washer or something let's take a look all right so i'm over at the consumer unit for this shed now notice that the circuit that was causing the problem is locked off and tagged off find out more about safe isolation in my safe isolation video and then what i'm trying to do now is measure the continuity or resistance between this earthing terminal up here and the pipes over there that i can't reach because i'm not mr tickle uh, my arms aren't long enough and also my test leads aren't long enough that is where we introduce a wonder lead. It's wonderful in both sense of the word, uh, but I think the idea is that you can wander around with it. So what you do is you plug one end of your lead in here, and now I've effectively got myself a 50 meter test lead. Now what we're gonna do is something called nulling the leads. We're gonna tell the meter to ignore the resistance in this long cable. So I touch them together like this, hit a button on my meter, and the 1.7 ohms of resistance that was in this lot is now gone away, and when I touch these, it reads zero. That's where you start. So then I am gonna connect this thing to the earthing terminal up here. And then we're gonna wander in a wonderful way over to the pipes and take some readings. So I'll see you over there. We're plugged into our wonder lead. We have our wonderful continuity checker ready. Let's go, let's get onto the copper, making sure that we scrape through any of the outside. That was 0.15 ohms. That's pretty good continuity between the earthing bar and here, given all the pipe work. Now let's try this other offending pipe. Now here, I get no continuity at all. That's not good. That means this entire pipe system, let me try the other pipe. Yeah, so both the flow and the return of this heating pipe system seem to have no good continuity to ground uh, whatsoever. That is a little bit concerning. Whoever installed this uh, didn't install it correctly electrically. So it seems like my hypothesis is correct. Now, another little bit of content for you. Uh, how about using a multimeter, one of these devices? This is by, um, Bayer Ampro, same parent company as Fluke. It's a half decent multimeter, but these are only designed for microelectronics. Don't use them uh, for low voltage power electronics like this uh, that you'd have in, in a house. Let me show you why. Uh, by the way, this one's for you, Benjamin, one of our watchers. So if I take the probes out of my multifunction tester and just pop them uh, like for like into this multimeter, uh, set it onto the low ohms uh, setting, and then see what it says. So what it says here is, 
uh, zero ohms immediately, which is not correct, by the way, because it was 0.1 something ohms. Uh, and it varies all over the place as well. The reading isn't stable on the screen here, you'll see. Okay, it can't decide what the resistance is. And then if I come onto this other pipe in exactly the same place, it tells me that I've got zero ohms, a great continuity. Well, that's just not true. By the way, it also can't make its mind up. You see it jumping all over the place there? The thing about a multifunction tester like this is it's specified to push at least 200 milliamps of current during its continuity test. And that's really important because the circuit can behave very differently with a very high impedance uh, resistance meter like this, which sends almost no current through the circuit uh, compared to this bad boy that sends a much more real world amount of current and then sees how the circuit behaves. So please don't use multimeters for multiple reasons for uh, this type of work. A solution to this problem would be to run an earthing cable from here somewhere across here with all this other mess uh, and down and bond somewhere to these pipes. But the problem is this particular shed is already a complete and utter mess. Let's take a look around it and I'll show you what I mean. If we start back at the origin, what's happened over here is we've had a old supply. You can hardly see the cable because it's blue, the same color uh, as the wall. But you can see it coming out of the floor there to an old consumer unit with fuses in it uh, that have now been replaced with little miniature circuit breakers. And that provided just a ring circuit, just, just that socket, I think, and a light. And then what's happened since then is p p this biomass uh, boiler system has been installed. So there have been two armored cables run in here. Uh, one uh, brings a 40 amp supply from the house, which isn't enough, by the way, given that there's a car charger hanging off this building. And another brings in a heating demand um, signal, which tells us when the pump needs to run. So uh, if you add all of this together, you've got a complete and utter mess. So we've got the old wiring there, which is the lighting and that socket. Then you've got a whole bunch of uh, old black and red twin and earth cables. You've got uh, two different supplies to this shed, both of which are inadequate. One of which is only rated for 40 amps. The other is rated for less. Uh, we have a consumer unit and then another consumer unit and then ugh, and a mess of cabling here. We have a cables trailing because we've had other requirements in here, uh, such as uh, powering external uh, LED lights and this sort of thing. So we have cables, extension leads. It's just a complete and utter uh, mess. So my goal is going to be in a future video to completely uh, rewire this shed uh, from scratch. I have to say it's quite nice to be back in the house now because that shed of horrors is starting to give me the heebie-jeebies. Uh, I'm looking forward to the rewire and any ideas for it, please put them in the comments and I'd be glad to receive them. I'd also like to hear your stories about electrical uh, mishaps, especially if they involve plumbing somehow, as that was the theme of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. I produce a long form video like this every week and a short form a bit of fun every single day. So I hope to see you subscribe, hope to see you in the comments and thank you very much for watching. Bye.